I I'm making XCOM level rolls here. Come on. How did that even miss? Why does it keep missing? Ah, uh, and I'm dead. What's going on, dudes? Levin's mood here. A new mod that brings roguelike elements to Divinity. Original Sin 2 is here, and it's called Darkest Divinity Original Dungeon. It's currently in a demo state and early development, but you can get a taste of it yourself with the link in the description. If you're a mode developer yourself and would like to help out in the creation of this mod, just let the creator know. Starting out, I struggled to get the mod itself started. I thought it would be in Game Master mode. It wasn't. Had to click the campaign screen and it had a drop-down menu that I had never seen before to access it. Obviously, had to set it to Tactician. Otherwise, how could I call myself competent at this game? Scoff. Character creation was a bit different with a new background. I had to think about what class I wanted to try first, and it came down to an archer since it was the first on the screen, and it said custom class. Had to go with Seville, of course, for the flesh sacrifice and elemental arrowhead combo. No lone wolf, I wanted an authentic experience. It started me off in a small hub with plenty of traders around and an adorned knight next to a chest. I checked out the new statuses introduced which had a modifier based on light, tiredness, hunger, and morale. I spoke with him first and got the gist of things, but didn't bother exploring the recruitment camp. Into the forest I went, itching for a fight. Little did I know there would be two fighters in my first room that knocked me down and taunted me, causing me to get killed out of my control. Didn't save before the room, so I had to start a new run. This time, I went with an Inquisitor, so I had life steal and a knockdown ability to get revenge on those fighters. I ended up getting a lucky charm proc on my expedition chest, so I got a belt to throw on. I discovered the recruitment camp off to the side with adventurers for hire. Given how poor I was starting, I thought it might be less, but 136 G-O-L-D. That's highway robbery. I did some more looking at the other prices until I came across an affordable hireling. Into the next dungeon. I wanted to sneak to find out more about my surroundings and the enemies, which is buffed by the darkness. This time there was an assassin. I got up to him and stole his goodies. He became a bit dramatic before starting combat with me. After a few misses, it went well and I looted his corpse for his armor. I took a look around the room and saw that there were some tree stumps to loot. Most of them didn't have anything unless Lucky Charm went off. Then on to room two. After satisfying my hunger with provisions, I moved further into the room. There's an archer that starts shooting from a distance and tears down my physical armor right away. Then he ran. And ran. And ran. And I looted his body afterwards. The next room humbled me with crowd control and bad accuracy. I don't need to say more. Next run. I got super lucky with the Lucky Charm Prowl to afford a third adventurer. I also realized summoners are quite useful at this point. I made a mistake and skipped to floor four after floor two and met three enemies, two of which were new. The Grenadiers took out my health very quickly. I reloaded an autosav at the first floor and exited for the first time 
and ended up with some loot in the chest back at camp. My companions were exhausted, so I sent them back to rest. I went back in on my own, and it went about as expected. Next run. Grenadiers aren't as effective without their grenades. Archers also have the glass cannon talent, so crowd control works right away. Assassins have the parry master talent. I got a lucky roll on a tree stump and got a new chest piece. Back at camp, I made some loot sales and got a few new upgrades from the traders. Only thing is, Sibyl is exhausted, and the only way to improve that is by sending her to reserves. And so I did. But Sir Laura took her place. I made a few more runs and couldn't find her back at camp, and that made me sad. A few days later, I wanted to try again, but this time with Fane. I didn't see any undead in the mod, and I wondered how it might work. I made him a wizard with some poison and fire for extra effect, along with the torturer talent. The game spawned me with basic starting gear from the normal story, unfortunately. But I noticed that I no longer had a morale, hunger, or fatigue indicator. Very interesting. The poison and fire combo turned out great as expected, and I was able to pick up and use the armor from my first kill. After returning, still no other indicators on Fane, which was wonderful. That means I can continue using him without worrying about excessive debuffs. Much, much later, I found out I can remove the light debuff in the dungeon completely, by using two torches. Wow. After numerous runs, phone got focused down to death. Not problem, right? Well, I didn't have any more resurrection scrolls. Leaving the dungeon didn't bring him back. His presence was still on the map, but no body. I purchased another scroll and tried to get him back where he was on the map didn't work. Went back into the dungeon and saw his spirit. I had a glimmer of hope, but with no physical body to resurrect, my glimmer dimmed quickly. My precious fame was gone. I tried to go to every corner of the encampment and revive him by clicking his frame to no avail. He was gone and so was my will to continue. I had lots of fun with this mode, and I'm excited to see more improvements. If you want to try it yourself and support the creator, please click the link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.